welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. This is week week nine of Airtable off the record, Airtable Secrets and Lore. Um, so we're a group of Airtable users who are looking for new ways to use Airtable to optimize our businesses and lives, uh, as well as we're also very open to hearing about anyone in their experience, good or bad, about using Airtable to make a positive impact in the world. So we attempt to promote people coming from any level to share their ideas or ask questions or just chat about anything. And I really mean anything. We talk about a lot of different things in the group. So we also share our experiences, tips and practices, as well as offer ways to get help and get involved in the community. We meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time zone to 8 p.m. Like Eastern time zone. It's like an AAP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so to kick things <laughs> So uh, to, keep, to kick things off, we usually start with a few introductions. Uh, if we have some new people in here, I see we've got Devin, he's been here since I think week one. And then Chris and I have been moderating for a while. I see we've got Guy and Howard, I recognize you guys, and Alexandra. Awesome. Um, so glad. Alexander, uh, Alexander, if you want to speak, just raise your hand, come on up, you can share your Airtable experience. We are pro stage. We like people on stage. Yeah. And I know Guy was in here last week and he wanted to ask a question, but I don't think he got a chance to. So Guy, if you want to come up as well, that'd be awesome. Uh, but Chris, uh, we can introduce ourselves for anybody who's new. Uh, if we want to go into that. Do you want to introduce sure. yourself first? Sure. My name is Chris Dancy. Uh, I'm a Paracable user for, I don't know, three or four years. It feels like forever. Uh, like some parts of the Paracable community, not too excited about others, and that's why we do this. And I've known Ben for I don't know a while now, but we're on week nine of this. Outside of Airtable, I'm known as the world's most connected person. Uh, I get to fly all over the world and give keynotes. We're used to, um, and I run my life and my business on Airtable. Awesome, thank you, Chris. And my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS, and what uh, <laughs> what we do is we have business owners. Help them optimize their information system so an air table as well as integrating it through stuff like zapier or just air table internal automations we make a lot of that come to life uh, a lot of business owners don't have time or they don't want to learn all the neat tips and tricks of air table right off the bat so then they come to me to hire me i also have a youtube channel where i give a lot of free tutorials on how to you, on, on you all those tips and YouTube, tricks you the youtube channel yes i have i have the youtube channel and then I'm also <laughs> running this uh, clubhouse here with Chris, which has been it's been a, really cool to meet everybody from the community, which I see we've got like seven people in here now. So if anybody would like to introduce themselves, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand if you're in the audience. Yes, I'm Guy. Just real quick. Yeah, so I wanted to speak real quickly last week, um, give you a little bit of a kind of a cool trick that I found uh, with an Airtable automation for the group and for you, Ben or Chris, but um, I'm Guy, I run Datalytics, which is a um, data simplification agency is what I claim to be, but building uh, automations, but also workflows, um, simplifying processes, really having business owners and really business minded or, or process oriented. Chris, do you want to mute yourself? Um, like, like... Yep. <laughs> no. um, simplify their, their business life or get a hold of their data through that or data tools like Excel or Power BI or other tools. But basically what I wanted to show you guys, Chris or Ben, if you haven't discovered this yet, but I found a nice easy script that uh, you can drop into an automation that actually allows you to post to a webhook off after an automation completes like in the action. So I've been doing this with some of my um, external automations with, uh, I think it's either Integromat or Zapier, but being able to post to a webhook after you know a trigger inside of Airtable is pretty cool. Does it still so you don't have to rely on um, using the like the trigger inside of Zapier or Integromat because they don't have instant actions. So it's pretty uh, pretty pretty helpful. So Does you guys, it still like open up a new browser window? No, um, not that. It just simply works like any other webhook. It just allows the automation to actually post the data to your desired webhook. That's pretty cool. Where so like you if you have an automation inside of like Zapier or Integromat that you want to pick up on a webhook, mm -hmm. you would generate that hook and that tool, drop it into this script, and then set up your variables to post it to. 
did you develop that script yourself or where did you find um i didn't i found it through an article but i kind of tweaked it a little bit but it's pretty easy to actually get in and manipulate the variables or the the actual data you want to pull from your table that's pretty cool because it works right inside of the automation builder inside of that ui yeah pretty awesome and it works really well pretty fast so just as an fyi if you guys wanted to go over that or i can share like the snippet or something with you guys later i'm not near my computer currently but if you wanted me to show you that or, or whatever i can do that either offline or in another session i'm not sure uh, I think maybe, well, yeah you, maybe you can also jump on your computer and, and share <laughs> well, i mean we'll be I'm, here for uh, an hour we've got time. i'm mr momming for my two kids right now so i'll see if i can work that in but I think maybe for the group, you know, maybe a good thing would be, you know, what is a webhook? Oh, okay, sure. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm, I do this stuff for a living in both my nine to five and business. But um, overall, a webhook allows uh, basically the internet to talk to different web services. So things like uh, apps and Zapier pretty much all work either off API calls or webhooks. So somewhat, but um, not to get too technical, but it's an instant it's an instant call and response on the internet so um in Airtable, you know you set up an automation to then post to a webhook it'll instantly move that data from Airtable to your end tool like zapier or integramat or pably or name it if it if an app can pick up on a webhook or even like an internal business app if you have one developed it can do that too um yeah so it's basically a generated uh url HTTPS, typically they're all secure. And then it's like hook dot whatever your um, your actual tool you're using. So mostly it's hook dot Zapier or hook dot Integramat. And so that tool will listen for that webhook to pick up on the data. So it's an instant way for you to send data from one location to another nice. across the internet. Howard, do you guys use webhooks much at uh, the enterprise level? Um, not in Airtable, um, but in other aspects of the business, we definitely do. You can drop that webhook from your business into Airtable and have it work inside of your tool. <laughs> yeah, like so, like we have some. We use Airtable to backend some API mm -hmm. data, I and see. but so we have to format it as a JSON, and yeah, there's okay. the, and so um, we have. Do you a, use Airtable to to create that body, or do you just use it as the data store? We use it as the yeah we use it as the data store because the JSON object has to there's a like the Airtable base is essentially a flat file of a bunch of data yeah, and like sure. the way that we have to structure the data has to follow some certain rules so it's actually pretty cool right. the way the way that I built it um, is to be modular so as the customer requirements may change uh, so it's actually transmitting data on like IT assets going into a data center. So if we're shipping Sweet. a rack full of servers out to a data center, they want to be able to auto provision it. And that JSON blob is going to have all of the asset data. So like on a server, it might have all the MAC addresses, IPs, host names, all that kind of stuff in that blob. And then, you know, next quarter, a new requirement may change. And all of a sudden the new build has like, an extra nick in it or something like that. So we have to accommodate these additional uh, MAC addresses. Do you like and write so, that to a file you then drop onto the server or do you just like deliver it with the actual hardware? It, it all just goes through the API. So once we, uh, once we, once we, once we, once we build the racks, we auto capture all the data and then that ingests into Airtable and then their API can just pick up the information before it even leaves our warehouse. So, so cool. yeah. Awesome. And, and like, we couldn't do any of this stuff um i mean like two years ago like we couldn't do any of this it was so dreadful and painful and manual um yeah <laughs> it was so bad and um so just over the course of a couple of years we were able to iterate and build off of the Airtable platform and um uh yeah so we did we, long story short is we're not using webhooks for that but um the, the webhook that connects to our, basically a different webhook from our customers connect to our API. Um, and that's front-ended by um, some functions that we wrote in Azure that just nice. basic, basically just like a node in Azure that runs the yeah. JavaScript to create the blob and it hits the, um, I think it's probably just a curl uh, command yeah. to the table to get out the data. 
Sweet. Well, that's cool that you're using it like that to leverage the, uh, the actual air, like Airtable API. Yeah, and it, it it's it's awesome. <laughs> I could actually in, me and a colleague of mine are actually in the process of building an app that'll allow lay users or or common users to connect their tools like Airtable to um, to things like Excel and other data tools to ingest and use for their own purposes. What? Yeah. Yep. We're uh, we're we're going to be rolling it out to other tools mainly, but one of the ideas is to make it tool agnostic. So any tool with like an open API or a consumable API, we're going to be writing it for. Yeah. But that, that's, that's, that's a really cool use case though. Well, thank you guys for sharing. That was an awesome back and forth. Definitely rang a lot of bells and also a lot of stuff flew over my head with uh, all the APIs. But uh, the topic for this week that we're going to talk about, and how, or I guess for both of you, I have a few questions about the enterprise and some of the cool things you can do there, um, especially since Airtable has such a growing enterprise network. But the main topic for this week that we're going to talk about here now is going to be their valuation. So for those of you who did not hear our table, and I'm sharing the screen if you're watching this on video, uh, but for, there's a Forbes article and uh, a few other articles about Airtable tops at $5.7 billion valuation uh, on growing enterprise sales in a soaring cloud market. Chris, I'm, I'm, I know you have thoughts on this. So what are your thoughts on what, what this means for Airtable? Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, listen, this will be the first of at least two of these this year, right? So, what are we at now for valuation? Five, five point seven billion. Yeah, they're like a little bit over doubled their last one from September, I think. Yeah, so I'm calling ten billion by the end of the year. Uh, and what I think was really interesting about this one was it came on the heels of the most epic amount of outages the platform has ever seen. So interestingly enough, if you just do a quick little search of Twitter, uh, there's a lot going on in Airtable. A lot of people are, are mentioning it, mentioning things. Also, I, uh, I noticed someone mentioned that there's a new trigger for webhooks. I think you guys were talking about webhooks just a second ago. I was trying to find the tweet. Have you guys seen the trigger for webhook? Yeah, in the Airtable. So it's an action. Yeah, yeah, action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, it's in this trigger section, uh, which I thought was really kind of interesting that they're they're pulling out uh, out of the woodwork. Uh, I don't know. And again, like I said with the start of the show, I think Ashton Kircher, who is a big Airtabler, uh, you know, being a uh, heavy on this uh, this this last round is kind of a interesting move. So we'll see. This whole Ashton Kircher thing is also news to me. <laughs> but I just skimmed a couple articles after you mentioned that the first time. But uh, interesting connection there. Yeah, you know what's interesting about Astrin is, besides Demi Moore, um, he always leads no matter what it is. Like he was early in on Foursquare. He was early in on Twitter. I think he's been early in on just a lot of things. So I think it says something a lot. Uh, again, we'll have to see. But the, the, the service having the most outages ever and then this valuation. I mean, there's 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 a lot going on here. Did you see how he's comment, or did anybody see how he's uh, like his statement, kind of? Uh, did he release a statement in the article? Uh, yeah, it's in this article that I'm sharing on the screen. But he said we are going to aggressively invest into improving the stability and scalability of the product, go into new service areas, and increase our sales and marketing but we're doing it in a disciplined way where we are still in control of our business. I like that he included still in control. Yeah, and again, I, I think there's also, there's a lot of other fingerprints to see here. I mean, how he tweets very little and his last actual tweet was a retweet and it was from the uh, Forbes uh, guys. So, I mean, he's playing a really strategic game here. And that's why I'm still saying, and I got into a little bit of a disagreement with someone on Twitter about this. I don't know if it was Twitter or Facebook. But uh, if they're if they're not acquired, it could be they could end up being messy. You feeling me? Because like if you look at Dropbox, right? You know, Dropbox has gotten real messy over the years. And I was talking with someone on this uh, online about this, and I feel like, I, and by the way, I don't want them to get acquired. I don't want them to messy. But I think at this growth rate, we're looking at one or the other. 
I don't know. I, I'll unpack that later. I, I think that comes down to purpose, though, right? Like, like I, from what I've seen, this this guy seems to have like a, a, a true purpose to like you know it, it enable people to build their own stuff. I, when I, you say this guy, you mean Howie? Yeah, Howie, yeah. like because you see like some companies that kind of exist to be acquired. Whereas I feel like Airtable exists to actually, you know, enable people to do stuff. And even places like, I mean, I don't know. I think it's just, it's a question of purpose. And I think this guy actually wants to do something. Well, that's the thing is I, I, I like Howie. I think he, 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 in all his interviews, he sounds great. But if you look at his, background, at his background, they they have an event horizon where they will be acquired. Someone write this down. It will happen in the next 12 months. Or it'll just become bloatware. And it's not that I don't think he has purpose. I think you're absolutely right. He's impassioned when he talks about where he wants this to go and how he wants to empower a community of makers. I hear it, I hear it in his voice. But you have to look at the momentum, the momentum behind the money, right? The money chasing this company is huge and it's only going to get bigger. My point is at some point that money is going to want a bigger return. And the only way they're going to get a bigger return is to stratify the product, which is going to you might might we might shake off some users or start adding on stuff that no one really needs. I, I, I'm not saying I just I'm I'm just trying to be real sensitive here. I'm not saying you're not wrong. I'm just saying money often wags the dog. Oh no, hundred oh, yeah. percent. completely understand. What about an IPO? Oh, no, they, IPO. I'm okay with that. I mean, you know, but again, I, to me, when I look at when I look at Airtable, I see Dropbox from a from a financial and just success point of view. I thought one of Howie's other, or not one of Howie's other, but one of the other comments in this article that I was reading was very interesting. And this was the same article about their big valuation recently. Mm -hmm. um, but in past weeks, we had talked about how like a lot of time there's like an Airtable champion or there's like, it's at like the one person level is where Airtable starts and then it spreads across the organization. Um, but then they're also very much heavily focused on uh, enterprise sales and like enterprise satisfying enterprise customers but this one was saying how they're impressed by Airtable quickly spreading through companies by word of mouth um, but Airtable also dedicated themselves to spending more money on sales and marketing um, so I'm curious if they're like trying to spend more to get more enterprise clients or if that's to try to get like the little guy in the company to adopt well again it. look at their, look at their yeah, guy, you're right. I mean, look at their marketing, though. I mean, we've all noticed they've had a series of blogs over the last three months that have just been exceptional. The last five, eight videos that have come out have been spot on. Uh, they're heavily promoting Aaron. I mean, there's 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 some major stuff going on internally. Sorry, guy, to cut you off. No, you're good. No, I actually had a client who turned down Airtable and went to a different product because they uh, they, they couldn't get a response at all from the enterprise sales team. Like they wanted to spend a decent amount of money to, to bring on like 20 or 30 users, but they weren't willing to spend like, you know, pro prices that, that user level is, is pretty dang expensive. So they wanted to turn to enterprise, but yeah, they couldn't be, they couldn't get a response. I couldn't get a response. So like, enter, like Airtable enterprise lost the customer that day because they couldn't get um, like they any response from them. So well, and I think, this is where Airtable, I think this is where Airtable messes up is they wouldn't have even qualified for enterprise because to get onto enterprise, you need 50 users. Um, oh, sure. And it's $60 a user per month. So, and, and let's, on, you know, yeah. there's like a, a bit of it's a gap a 30, here, yeah. Yeah, it's a 35 grand ante to get into the enterprise program. Exactly. Um, let's unpack that for a minute. That's where they have a, a pretty big gap, I think, because like my, my, my client had like 30 users he wanted to onboard at like pro level but that would have been like a $2,400 a month you know thing but they wanted more users not more features right so that's a problem I think yeah question so, for anybody who's on enterprise I mean like, I think a little what, bit. but couldn't they have stayed on pro though that's what I don't understand yeah but they didn't need pro features they didn't need a lot of the pro features they just needed more collaborators and more users uh, so question for somebody on the enterprise like uh, pro you pay like per user per workspace is enterprise just per user flat Correct. Yeah. So we have unlimited workspaces, unlimited bases, and so far we haven't run into a record limit. And see, this is where I think that the real issue is, is, is in this whole user per workspace thing at the pro rate, because like that is seriously limiting 
for you know these kind of what you talk about these 20 30 or 10 or these smaller kind of groups that are trying to like get into it and get bought in like you, you know you, you, if you have different departments but you only want to have a couple people and then kind of get used to it like that's a huge limitation if you want to share things back and forth Okay, and then I, I just want to unpack that because the numbers are the you know I think there's a, there's a lot of scary numbers here, right? So you need about thirty five thousand dollars a year to get in, right? So for for that many users, well, that's that U.S. that that's a lot less than a developer, right? So let's just leave that there. But what you end up with, right? But what you end up with is out of those users, maybe fifty percent of them as you know pseudo developers. So you're so sprawl you're on, that on that system versus, versus just buying just something buying off something. the shelf. Now, uh, granted, I'm not saying that that's the best way to go, but you, uh, somebody who's got an enterprise is going to say, you've either got so much money that it doesn't matter, $35,000 is, is nothing. But for a lot of the quote unquote smaller enterprises they probably want to attract, that is never going to fly. You know, just do a Monday.com. It's just never going to fly. They've got one of the best comments I read recently or this week about the after the evaluation was, they need just to change the licensing model. I, I, I don't know. I have a feeling that's going to happen quick. Yeah, that's that's on my whole take. I mean, like my client had the money. I mean, they're they they have money to spend, but not that much for this one one tool in their business. Like mm -hmm. for most businesses, man, Airtable is like one tool mm -hmm. out of out of many, and they don't want to put that kind of investment into one tool. You know, where they want to spend fifty grand on their website, which gets them way more clients or way more business. And I think you might you might get there someday, but you need that adoption which uh, starts at yeah. the, the, the smaller Small level. level. Like for me, like I have to own all of the bases for the, the for the couple coworkers I have on Airtable because like you know if they made one and I made one and I if we were on both each other's we're paying like double what we pay. Like that just makes no sense. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm at a public library and we love Airtable. It's been fantastic. And we got a year of pro this last year um, for free because of some work we were doing in the community to um, make and distribute PPE. But as far as like long-term adoption of even using the pro accounts, it's definitely outside of a library's budget. Something I personally get annoyed at is everybody offers education and nonprofit discounts, but there's rarely a library discount, and our budget like a governmental. Money. Yeah, it's governmental, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. My, my, Microsoft is pretty big into that. Some of the bigger tech companies are pretty keen on a lot of those different markets. Yeah, libraries tend to get overlooked. Google seems to be the only one that's thought of us so far. Well, Larry, Larry and Sergey spend a lot of time in libraries, so I mean, they're, they're, they probably owe you. <laughs> One feature you guys, that I saw. You guys aren't considered nonprofit, though, right? You're considered like governmental because you get funding from lo like local governments. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're funded by taxes, and so that right. we also aren't considered education. Yeah. Uh, sure because we're not part of the school districts. So we're usually just left right out of those discounts. And again, that's another thing where their whole licensing team or their, you know, whoever's developing their, their licenses needs to look at that. That's lost business right there. Yeah. And they're not really losing that much money by offering that kind of a, say as a 20% or whatever discount for those different markets. They're not losing money guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the other thing is, um, to all this point, is they've, they've been on just an insane hiring spree, um, and they're building out all of these sales teams that you're talking about. And that's the long story I mean, sort of like you. why people aren't getting, why kind of the smaller pro slash on the bubble of enterprise users aren't hearing from Airtable is just because they don't they don't have those teams trained and built out yet sure. um and so it's interesting like thought. yeah like if you look at their like their job postings i mean they just have just a ton especially in austin which is where they're they're building out i think the smb sales team um because there's just a, there's a tremendous amount of that type of um kind of young recent college graduate uh call center uh, sales in Austin. There's a ton of it. Like my company has stuff Insight, Dell, um, Google, Facebook. They they all they're just these huge campuses of you know, a couple of hundred recent college grads dialing for dollars and and whatnot. That 
all work for these different companies as they're progressing in like sales and tech careers. Yeah. Quick question for the people that do like more like consulting and kind of freelance stuff. Like, how does the pricing model affect you when you when you're doing that kind of work? Because I mean, I'm thinking about it, like my buddy. I convinced him to get Airtable and he's working on it for a project and he was kind of texting me about like, you know, how we do certain things. And I was thinking like, if I could pop on there and just, you know, kind of half build something and show him like directly in his workspace, like that'd be useful. But, you know, instead of just me having a user, him having a user, like he'd have to pay for me to come into his workspace. So if you're, if you're consulting, I wonder like, do you generally get people that are new to Airtable so you kind of just make a, a corporate account for them and, and work off that in their workspace or like, or do you ever find that you're, you know, uh, kind of at a disadvantage because you've kind of got to, you know, add an additional user into work within their workspace? Depends on the on the project for me. Um, if it's a quick fix, and I, I I typically do it over Zoom or some kind of like screen sharing method to fix it. Or if it's a long term engagement, then I'll probably sign an NDA and then get their username and password and just work off that. Yeah, I think I think there's well, a lot to that model. question uh, <laughs> for like how how do you make the price worth it to them? And I think you really have to not only sometimes are you selling them on like your consulting services, but you're also selling them on the fact that Airtable is like the best solution for their business to solve uh, their operational pro problems, their systems, their data problems. Um, so you really kind of have to bake it into that and uh, give them the like end game like show them the a final product of like this is what you could have if you like put all your eggs in Airtable and I think showing them that they're like okay let's get this built as fast as possible because I don't know how I was ever living without this uh, because once yeah. everything's set up there and they can like visualize that that's something the consultant should be doing is helping them visualize like where are we going and one of the reasons that I do that and why I do that is I want to be as as touch free and as, as minimalist as possible. So I don't want to create a new user, create a new password. I'm just going to get in to what you have, fix what needs to be fixed or done what needs to be done and then get out. Like I want to leave like with no trace of me ever being there pretty much is how I approach most of my like consulting jobs or projects is pretty much like touch free or or something like that yeah I, don't know. I just i feel like that's like pretty risky on the, on the password like sharing thing even if they like change it and whatnot but then also like you know if you ever have like a retainer with somebody like i don't know i i don't i don't know that if i was a business owner i'd want to pay that monthly cost for your user like if i'm just intermittently accessing your your services and like i guess the other question is like maybe if people have done this if they if they do a pop in pop out like do, do you get charged for the full month or do you, is it prorated or like yeah. They charge you for a year and then return it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a whole, a whole Airtable privacy and Airtable security is a whole different basket of worms or whatever that term is that we can get into. Um, but permissions. that is just like, a, yeah, permissions. Because there's so many, but also none of the ones we want, I feel like sometimes. Um, but permissions, I've always went the route of just having them share me on the workspace because it's just a lot easier to log into my one uh, account and then have That's every single client's uh, workspace just there. Um, the only thing that's, that gets tricky is um, getting them to, if they want an API connection, getting them to input that in Zapier or Integramat, because um, that, that is probably the most sensitive thing uh, that they have more than their password sometimes. But one of the one of the things with Airtable permissions and sharing and that rabbit hole is, Howard, I have a question for you if you're still on here. Uh, I saw a comment in the Airtable community Facebook group that talked about an editable shared view link uh, for enterprise users. And I wanted to pick your brain if you've heard anything about that, if that's like a beta release just for enterprise or. Yeah, so it, they, they made a beta. Um that's in limited release and it got put on hold because of um not enough basically two things not enough developers to focus on it along with the rest of the stuff in the roadmap that was taken a higher priority and uh to your guys earlier point about the licensing 
Um, I, I think they are well aware that their licensing model is jacked up. <laughs> um, and, and it's definitely one of those things where um, if they could get it right in terms of creators versus editors versus you know, commenters and potentially, you know, drive by just need to look at data users. Um, that's, they're going to, um, especially like in our company, they're, they, they would have such a lower barrier to wider adoption, mm -hmm. meaning like we could get, we could get, you know, hundreds of read only users, like, licensing on the platform and being able to say like like if they were read only on enterprise but then they had their own personal um you know free workspace that they could play with their table and do their own stuff on that's going to lead to them just creating stuff that all of a sudden they have now have a business case and a use case to go to it and get approval to get upgraded to enterprise so i think that there's there's definitely like an opportunity to Airtable to revisit how they do licensing, especially for enterprise customers, that will allow them to more rapidly um, re-break into those accounts again and again and again. Because that's essentially what happens, right? With the with with their entry point into most customers, I'm definitely this use case. You've got one department that starts adopting the tool and it really gets legs, and then all of a sudden we need all these other features. And so, like at that point. You know, we've we've vetted this out. We baked off Airtable versus Smartsheet versus Excel Online versus Google Sheets, and we land on Airtable that this is what we're going to roll out. Um, we were able to do all that basically for free, right? We were able to really build it and test it, do everything till we vetted it out, and then and then can then you know purchase our license. Versus and then versus the next team at my company that wants to come on and do the same thing, they're immediately becoming enterprise users and hitting our enterprise user account, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes that, um, it makes that repeatability for them to have that, the, the, that sort of no risk, you know, experimentation process, um, more difficult. So that's, uh, that's essentially my long story there is there could be editable shared views at some point in time. Um, but at the moment I don't, I don't anticipate them making, a lot of moves on it. I would actually expect them to buy or create their own competitor to like, um, what is it? Softer. Stacker. And then there's a yeah, stacker. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a few of these other ones out there that are, it's just a better experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think that they, you know, they essentially did that with automations is there was another company that was starting up that was doing a lot of stuff. Um, to build a, a kind of a competitor to Zapier and Tegramat and um, how we basically funded those guys. And they, I think, are the, the main engine that built out the core of automations. So how does that beta work? Like if you shared a view, like you had to have a user on the other end that could edit it. Or, or like... So basically, yeah. So basically it's a read only view, but you could set specific fields that were editable. And so what would happen is, you know how when you um, have a form get submitted that it says that, the record would be like created by anonymous. Yep. That's basically it is, is an anonymous user could make changes. And so it, so it it's one of those things. Like it's, it was a free thing that like you could change yeah. somebody that didn't have a license. And, yeah, sure. they could. yeah. And so it was like, it was going to be, it was, it, and that was where Airtable would, I think why they pushed the pause button, not really developing it and rolling it out because they could instantly see, Oh shit! As soon as we let this out of the bag, and it's free for all of these people to just have read-only and like minor um, edit access, we're never going to be able to go like start to charge for that functionality. So I, I think that's the other reason why it's paused. Is I think that that's in their mindset of like we need a light Airtable user license, and that's going to enable them to roll it out more and I think capture more, more revenue from those, from those users. And that matches to some similar other, you know, SaaS products that have these tiers of user licenses. Yeah. Cause like right now, like we, we have people like in the production facility filling out forms and oftentimes if they make just a simple typo and they know they make the typo, they have to email me to get it changed. Whereas ideally they could be able to edit the fields they've entered without touching the entire base and like, yep. You know, kind of um, you could do a crazy workaround. Um, just throwing this out there. 
where um, when they fill out the form, it it writes to an Excel sheet and they update the Excel sheet with automation no, and it writes back or something. No, uh, no. So it'll 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 um, you create a unique uh, URL uh, that gets created. That's a link to um, this record, and then basically. Uh, you have another form that they get to fill out and they click on it and it'll take them to the record that they want to update. They put in the information that they want to update and submit that. That then triggers your automation to look up the other record and update the information for you. So it's basically doing the work of them sending you the email without you having to actually read it. And actually the changes. I think Gareth just uh, released a video about that recently. On the I think YouTube he did channel. actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of our we have another team that runs another uh, project at my company, and that that was their workaround. Once once the automations and that uh, the URL formula thing that can generate a custom URL for the records, like um, they they've been using that for a few months now, um, and it's pretty slick. The other workaround that I've heard of is if you use a synced view and then you like sync that into a free workspace uh, to get around the users, as you could use a sync view and then just kind of duplicate whichever field you want them to be able to edit. And then when like have a record ID stored in there from the, the original base. And then when they edit the duplicated fields, then have an automation with Zapier that when those are updated or when you like check a box or something, then send those back to the original Airtable base. Has anybody tried that one out? with the sync views? I have not, but that is fascinating. Yes, yeah, so you can do it with Zapier. Um, the next thing that I wanted to bring up is, I, I personally think that the editable shared views is probably, like I feel like if, if that were to actually be a thing, I feel like that would be bigger news than the valuation in my mind. Because I think that's like the biggest thing prohibiting teams from using it more uh, is is that the cost associated with it. But if that was an option, then I think a lot more teams would be able to get uh, like rationalize it or if they just bought like Stacker. But I'm kind of curious, uh, we've talked recently about like the waterfall of like uh, the features falling down from enterprise to pro, pro to plus and plus to free. So I'm curious if that one's like not even in quite in enterprise yet, like fully, when it would end up in like even pro or plus or free. Does anybody have any thoughts on that one, on how, how long of a timeline we're looking at on that? I was just going to take Chris's uh, estimate for everything and say within the next 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I've seen this too many times. This is what is going to happen. I mean, it's it's I almost feel like our, on on our tenth anniversary our tenth week ten which will be a big number for us we need to create an Airtable time capsule and write down all of our guesses for twelve months from week ten and then open it up in twelve months and see how many we got right. Yeah, that could be the theme next week. Yeah. That'd be a good one. We can make an Airtable of it, my love. Uh, the record time. Yeah, we'll have to bring. You know, the form we could actually submit predictions and submit the date time that it was submitted at would be like the. Okay, That's who's gonna finish? Who's gonna finish up the form before the show's over today? And we've got uh, just enough smart people in here. Uh, we can do it right now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. I literally was updating my own air table while you guys were talking. I bought a shed today and had to put it in my asset. And because it's over a certain dollar amount, it counts as a major asset, which means I had to update yeah. another table. All right. Uh, Enough, enough about my life. How about yours? I thought it was really something. Uh, really something. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was a guy named Daniel Berman. I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen so that our, our I guess our, our growing Facebook users can see this. He had actually shared his Airtable. I guess he was inspired and built a, an entire task. Uh, what did he call it? it took me 6.5 months. But here's my web dashboard with data entry forms for the six parts of my personal air table. Also added reports for today's tasks. So in here, he's got journal entries, task entries, inboxes, timelines, people entry, and organization entry. So basically, he's done this thing. And I actually saw someone on Facebook mention this, that uh, they were looking for a way to kind of get everything on one screen. They say, just do a board with a, uh, or a private web page with a password. Uh, 
I like it. I like seeing this, this, this kind of stuff when people share this out online and, and cause there's still so many people, I mean, you guys are old timers, except for maybe Alexandra. Alexandra, are you an old timer in your soul? Using air cable for probably three years now, but you're an old timer. You're... Yeah, you're an old timer. Um, but like, there's so many, uh, so many new people getting an air table right now that I think it's, you know, they, they've got to see some inspirations. One of the cooler things, something else I want to share real quick to the Facebook group, uh, is I don't know if any of you saw this, but in the Facebook group, someone was looking for a way to show progress bars, and I'd seen this before. Uh, but there's a great, if you want to check out March 2nd, if you're not watching the stream, March 2nd on the Facebook group, no, someone named Lindsay posted this and actually put a screenshot of their progress bar. It's pretty cool. Ben, had you seen this? Yeah, I have seen that. And then I saw it in like the Airtable forum somewhere. There's a few different versions of it, but, and I saw it, like, it's a crazy formula behind that, but it's very cool. I can't imagine the formula behind this. Yeah, I, I considered it a good day when I can get my red, yellow, and green emoji balls to automatically change when I change statuses. That's that's a good day for me. Has anybody else played around with like building a status formula that like shows the percent of like, like kind of fill in a percent of the field? I'm uh, so I'm finally connected to the Facebook Live so I can see. We have to be careful. We so can't convert a people. Formula that I don't, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it just shows like uh, it fills in blocks. I'll bring it up again There's if like someone's going to come over. Eight of them are empty. Two of them are full. I think Chris is showing it again now. I'm pulling up right now. It's really nice. It uh, cool. So I got to share it up my screen. So again, it would be an amazing, <laughs> amazingly complex formula that would do this. But yeah, it's so totally possible. I'm ready for next week. Uh, I'll post it in the description of the Facebook live. Oh, there. that's so oh, well. That is awesome. The Facebook is finally catching up with where we are. <laughs> that is super cool. We we have something. Um, How does that even work? <laughs> it's got to be a formula of like if this percentage or if these things are filled out show. I, yeah, I believe oh, it's. An yeah, I believe it's pulling yeah, yeah, in blocks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe it's pulling in blocks. Those blocks are pulling in emojis and a certain amount of them, and then the percentage and doing it like a huge concatenate. Yep. Yeah. That's actually somewhat logical. Yeah. That's, but yeah. again, think about a company worth five billion dollars where you have to do an a, a formula to get emojis to do. Just think about that. I mean, I'm still, I'm still kind of gripey on the, the, the double table pass through. So if you parent table, child table, child table, and you want to go from like the second child to the parent, then you got to go through the middle plan. Yeah, you have to do your persistent lookups. Yeah, you got to do persistent lookups to pass them through to your next field. And, and yeah. again, I mean, we, I saw this yeah. was on, this, that was on, I think, the Reddit. Again, it, I, I worked with databases for four, 30 years. This is Airtable's got to such a weird way of doing it. Uh, something else I saw, I don't know if you guys saw this in the Facebook group, but somebody was complaining about the milestone in the Gantt view. <laughs> it was... I tried to comment on that because I hadn't played around at all. I just figured maybe it's a time thing. But... Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was like, okay, that's pretty good. And then another piece of fine air table, uh, fodder I got caught up here to share with everyone was, uh, oh, never mind. This was fun. Just looking for project manager. I think it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning of the, the call, uh, today. But the Gantt thing is right, but it makes some sense because basically it, 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 there is no time modifier, but it shows to the end of the day, which appears as though you're showing the next day. But I did look into this later. Yeah. One thing that I noticed with like the timing in Airtable is with if you ever use the trigger at a scheduled time, uh, it like doesn't shift for daylight savings. So um, I had a trigger that was at noon every day. And then it moved all my triggers like up and out. So for some reason, Airtable did not abide by. It, it's it's because it's using GMT. And I don't yeah, it's probably because, because it's the GMT based. Yeah, or UTC based. We actually have Daniel, the guy I did the shout out. Yeah, I got super excited when we could sync to Google Calendar, and so I did that, and then realized it was an 
completely different time zone. And at that point, I wasn't going back to changing all of my times. <laughs> We actually got Daniel, who saw me call out his Twitter in the Facebook group. So, uh, who's <laughs> how embarrassing? You're welcome for the shout out, Daniel. I was impressed. Uh, listen, last week I, I want to see if we can jump on something real quick. Last week I gave you guys a, a big tour of the Pori, uh, and uh, my Pori is coming right along. I mapped now using Pori to a custom domain, so no longer does it have the Pori, so it's it's sexier. Uh, but something I thought I'd bring up because Ben brought this up right before the show went live. Uh, I am a big Miro user. And one of the things I always talk about is how on my base, you know, I've got kind of my base layout, but then I've always got my Miro down here. Anyone else using Miro or Ben, you were so excited earlier. You want to talk about how you're using Miro when it integrates with Airtable? Because I do think it's sexy. <laughs> I use Miro as well. I thought, Ben, you were a big Draw.io user. <laughs> I used to be a Draw.io uh, user, but then I tried Miro out today. You like it, huh? And it was just, it was Pretty awesome. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I did a whole like ERD uh, with like including automation, the database design, the relationships, as well as like outside apps. And it was just, it was awesome. The, the client also loved it, which was even better. But I tried That's, it and it was I'm, like I'm so easy to use. That. Yeah, it was so easy to use. And then like they already had templates in there. And uh, my favorite part, that I saw besides how easy to use it was and it looked great was that it connects with Zapier or Z yeah Zapier yep. makes you happier and it's got a mobile application too yeah so now I can start automating like the creation of some of like the and for those of you who don't know Miro is like it's a visualization tool kind of like if you just had a whiteboard you could like put anything on it but you can put I mean Chris is showing his screen right now in the Facebook group and it's incredible, but you yeah. So this is yeah, this is yeah. my Miro. And what I did was I originally started out building my Airtable from here. So these are just my tables, uh, these little boxes. So I've got an entities table, which is me, my family, etc. But then that once I got them in there, you could actually click on these and actually have jump outs to them. So you could actually jump right out to the record. So it actually acts like an interface right into your Airtable too, because it can embed records. But then what it allowed me to do was actually place my Airtable in a functional layout. So my assets versus my liabilities versus my revenue tables versus my record keeping tables. So for those of you who can't see the uh, Facebook group, it becomes super, super simple way to visualize your work. The other thing I liked about it was it allowed me to look at where my Airtable is now. So right here, you'll see I've got a version of Airtable or, or a version of my, my, my personal Airtable. But then I could put a version two where I actually remove and I say what I'm doing. So in this new version, I've merged the reference in the journal. In this new table, I've merged journal and ledger. So again, it gives people a way to almost look at their bases over time, both functionally and uh, just from a structure data point, from a structure way. Because the, the ERD to me can be super overwhelming. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the ERD I was building today was not nearly as advanced as Chris's basis. Because uh, Chris has some very, very complex, some of the most complex bases I've seen. Well, awesome. I don't, I don't know about all that. They're, just, <laughs> I think they're thoughtful. I don't think they're complex. I've seen some complex stuff. Uh, no, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's good, it's good stuff. I would definitely try it. Miro, I think, is free to try out. And the, one of the things someone told me last year, I don't know if anyone has checked this out, but there's something called Secret. I'll see if I can find it. Uh, uh, the secret or get secret. Um, and they'll give you a thousand dollars worth of mirror credits and uh, $2,000 worth of air table credits for a hundred bucks. This sounds like the air table people trying to sell. Gotta be careful. Yep. No, 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 no. It's, it's <laughs> no, 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 seriously. It's legit. Just like, uh, have you guys heard of founders club on um, uh, founders club on product hunt? Do you guys know what product hunt is? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, Product Hunt Founders Club is like $2,000 a year and you get $1,000 or $2,000 worth of Airtable. Uh, but this other one, this Get Secret, I'll find the URL for it. Uh, again, it's you say you're a startup and they give you some, some cool stuff. So if you are a small business or a library even, and you're looking, <laughs> looking to get some free credits uh, this is probably the way to go. I'll get the I'll get the URL for that other uh, organization that gives you the thousand dollars with Airtable in one sec. 
Do you have to pay them anything to get it? No, so you have to pay them. I think I paid them a hundred dollars for my first thousand. Uh, but for product hunts founders, I spent a thousand dollars to get two thousand dollars worth of bear table. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. Has anybody else used any of those credits or gotten uh, credits through product hunt? I haven't used credit, so I do have a question for anybody on Miro. Do you know if that plays well with iPad or I think it does. Um, yeah, there's an iPad app. Yeah. I'm just thinking like if it's a whiteboard and Apple Pencil. Yeah, it's an infinite space, like white space builder. It's pretty cool. I use it for my um like like for my client if they need to get documentation for like process automations or workflows. I find it pretty handy. It's pretty light, pretty simple, but it's got a lot of features too. Yeah, it's uh, the URL is join secret and I can, here's a thousand dollars worth of uh, notion credits, a uh, thousand dollars worth of stripe, uh, $300 uh, off a of type form. form. So it's join so secret. Join secret Again, I joined maybe seven months ago and every single thing for the hundred bucks, it was a hundred bucks for me to join every single thing that I've asked for, I've gotten. So oh, it looks like there. Yeah. So the premium is $99 for a year. And if you come in here, am I still sharing my screen, Ben? ben? Yeah. Uh, if I go in and search for Airtable, you'll see here, Airtable. What's the deal here? Oh, so yeah. So the the one deal they've gotten here is now $1,000. Or the other deal they've got is $500 worth of credits. So again, you spend 100 bucks, you get $1,000 worth of Airtable credits. How? Come on. That's pretty good. Hey, Ben, I have to jump off here soon as well, but maybe like an idea for the group. I don't know. It's like one of these sessions, like I can help collaborate if these people, we could do like a, like a, like a Q and a session or like if people want to get help with their table, like if they need, like if they want to build an automation, we can do that for them. Like I live, would, like my PC as well. I would maybe love that. I, I'm not sure. Seriously, guy, I would love to do that because I see so many people who ask for stuff in the group and we could just invite them to the Wednesday meeting. I wanted to call Airtable Army and solve people's problems live once a week. Yeah. I'd love to do that. You could even have a separate, like, and I know this one kind of talks about um, using Airtable for your business or for your life, but you could have a separate one that focuses strictly on solving challenges like, hey, let's build your automation from scratch or, you know, let's, or connect it to like Zapier <clears throat> or do something like that. That involves their table, but people want like some help. But has anyone you know, been to they, Aaron's they don't want to live? Pay for it or is that similar to what he does? Does he like try to solve people's problems on his live? Yeah, that's what Aaron does. So Aaron once a week he sits down with someone. It's kind of like a talk show. I don't know if anyone's watched it. He streams it live. They take tackle a problem. I mean, it's cute. It's cute. Uh, I guess, but I think Aaron tries to do it for like marketing and actually it's it, it's it's performative. Whereas I would love just to get someone on who literally is saying, how do I do this? And just have people yeah, attack it. Yeah yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm actually doing that for Friday for a different tool yeah. that I specialize in, but it's like a free session join up and will help solve problems for free. Yeah. Like, and again, like take Alexander, I'm sorry to pick on you, Alexander, but like, I'd love to be able to say, if you're a nonprofit or a government agency, are you doing something good for social good? You know, Wednesdays after our regular show, we have a one hour, you know, everyone there will collaborate to solve your problem. I'm thinking of starting a, uh, like an actual nonprofit to do that for nonprofits or, or out like, like, a, like alternative market <laughs> businesses Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as an agency to, to cater to those folks. Yep. I mean, I, the so, first people I've catered to is like a CBD because that stuff's expensive and they, I know they could keep us supplied. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we could, you know, cater to those non, like, not-for-profit, non-profit type folks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll reach out to you guys. I also want to reach out about that script you were talking about to do the website. Sure. Yeah. Um, right yeah, now. I can. It's not, you know, it's not confidential, not secret. It's it's just a little bit of a JavaScript. So, yeah, pretty. Yeah, pretty sweet. Well, thanks, guys. I'm hopping off. Um, you, but we'll talk to you next week. And we can connect offline, Ben, if you want to. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Good to meet everybody. Cool. We'll see you guys. Bye. Devin, why weren't you on camera this week? We 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 were loving your mushroom doorway. Is there a link? Or... Oh, How'd you do it? How'd you do it last time? <laughs> yeah, you didn't put a link at the comments. <laughs> My bad. I can put it in there now, but <laughs> yeah, you'll be on. After. You'll be on. Uh...
I can't tell if Chris is talking or if he's not. Uh, he's not I always he's forget talking. to unmute because I've got too many microphones. I, I feel like Edward's, <laughs> Edward Scissors mic. I don't have, I got too much going on. Um, all right. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. It was good. It was good. Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, Howard, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say th thanks for hosting. I'm glad I put this in my calendar so I could be here on time. I'm glad you were here. All right. Thank you all for showing up. I'm going to end the live on Facebook, but I'll see everybody next week for the 10th episode where we will uh, look through form submissions and also maybe make some more form submissions on our predictions for the next 12 months. So thank you for showing up and I'll see it. We'll, we will all see you next week. <laughs>